Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining uh, the talk. So today, uh, we want to speak about the Mentored Projects Initiative, uh, which is um, part of the Council, an initiative that it was proposed by Fernando and Sierra. So a bit about us. Sierra. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, my name is Mira. I am from New Delhi, but I'm also based in Berlin. I am a UX UI designer, uh, and my history with Fedora started as an outreach intern, a mentor, and now the Mentored Projects Initiative colleague. So I have a bit of history with mentorship, and that's why uh, I'm working with this initiative. Hey there, I'm Fernando. I'm from Seville, Spain. Uh, I'm a network manager and, and I'm a state maintainer, a networking guy, in essence. And then also an Afedora packager and the Mentor Projects Initiative colleague. And I have been also a mentor for Ort Ritchie and Google Summer of Code in the past uh, with Fedora. So yeah, this is why I'm here, mainly. And I'm Yona. I'm based in Tirana, Albania. I work as a tech community manager consultant, and currently in Fedora, I'm the Fedora DI advisor, and also uh, an organizer for Fedora Mentor Summit. Uh, previously, I've been a mentor for Outreach and GSOC as well, which is also why I was interested in the initiative. Uh, so what it is, basically, the Fedora uh, Mentor Project Initiative? The goal that uh, we have as a team is uh, uh, to envision a future where mentors and mentees know what is expected from them in this journey. Uh, and they have like a smooth onboarding process uh, and also another part which is very important that we are also currently working is having this culture of recognition uh, for all the effort that they are putting into the project to make it successful. So who is it involved? Uh, the initiative leaders are Smira and Fernando here. I'm the executive sponsor because now for the initiatives as part of Council, uh, we have a, an executive sponsor to basically help them uh, to make the initiative successful and uh, fulfilling all the things that uh, we want to uh, do there. And we have collaborators, so Federal Council is helping us a lot with feedback and so on. And we put it Justin is part of Council, but we wanted to call it out because also he has done uh, a lot of work with us. So thanks everyone for uh, helping. And how does it re relate actually to the 2028 20, uh, strategy, which probably you, you heard it also from Matthew on the state of Fedora. Uh, so as part of the strategy and the focus areas that we have is community sustainability, which also connects basically with the uh, main goal that we have to uh, double the number of Fedora contributors every week. Uh, which, and when we speak about community sustainability, it's like a lot of things. But one of the uh, main things that we have it to cover there is that everyone in uh, Fedora has a mentor and everyone in Fedora is a mentor. And now I will leave it to uh, Fernanda and Sierra to uh, tell you more what we have done already and what's next. Thank you, Yona. So let's uh, discuss what we have done already. So the initiative was proposed in November 2023, uh, and that is when we proposed it. Uh, January 2024 was when our 324 applications began, and we applied to the summer cohort and we secured funding for three interns, which is, and also these were not all coding internships. We had a wide, we have a wide variety of uh, outreach uh, projects this time around, which is great. We also tried to apply to Google Summer of Code. Unfortunately, we were not selected, but that's a part of the process. Uh, but one of the things that we want to achieve with this initiative is make sure that we have set up the process so we can minimize uh, unsuccessful applications to internship projects. Um, yeah, and then in February 24, uh, our initiative was approved by the council. Then March, we conducted interviews with past mentors and mentees, uh, which, is a pro uh, which is a small step in this. We did two 
identify issues, what's, what's currently happening, what are the problems that mentors are facing, and also to, to recognize and appreciate people who go out of their way to help others out, who mentor other people in Fedora, which is an awesome thing to do. Um, we also now have a matrix tunnel dedicated to mentors so that they have a space for discussion, collaboration, and talk about all things mentors and for like mentor projects, whatever they want to discuss with other mentors. April 24, we apply to Google season of docs. And fortunately, it was not selected. We, we don't seem to have a good track record with Google project, or product, <laughs> but, but hopefully this will improve in the future. And we are, one of the main things that we are doing are writing role handbooks, which is essentially documentation for different kind of roles that you would see in a mentorship project. So that it's not just a mentor and a mentee. We also have people who overlook each mentor project, which we call the mentor projects coordinators. So we have published the handbooks for mentors and mentees, and we are writing two more handbooks right now. Okay, why outreach and reach out? This is, this is a good question. So Fedora has a very successful history with these programs. Like not to brag, but we are one of the cool kids when it comes to outreach. We get an insane number of applications, more than we can handle. We have to, all of the time, we have to close our applications early because we just, we're super popular. Everyone wants to sit with us. So, uh, and also we have successful inter who have who have become recurring uh, contributors. I was an outreach intern, and my mentor Marie, who's sitting right here, <laughs> she was an outreach intern. So we we have a very successful history of uh, converting our interns to recurring contributors. And outreach provides internships to people who are underrepresented in the community or, or who are subject to systematic bias, which is, uh, which really helps people who may not have a chance to contribute to open source and provide them with the funding and the resources and the means to participate and have a voice in the community, which is great. Okay, so role handbooks are designed to be a guide and to help contributors navigate their role, responsibilities, and the community at large. What we were seeing were that uh, year after year, while we were participating in these programs, most the onus of, okay, what to do, when to do, sort of fell on the person who was volunteering to do it, right? There was not a lot of defined process or, or, or something. It was mostly passed on from person to person, but there were no resources for people who wanted to be mentors or who wanted to propose a program in Outreachy or GTalk to know, okay, this is when I should be submitting my application, this is when I should be submitting my project, this is what I need to make sure that my project is successful, this is what I need to do. And so we started with these role handbooks. We have accomplished them for accepted interns, um, to just to for accepted interns to have like resources and documentation <coughs> around what they can expect, what to do, just have them a nice on, like, make sure that their onboarding is nice and they have all the resources they need to have a successful internship. And we have them for mentors, which is especially useful because we, we focus a lot on making sure that the interns have nice times. And, and usually that responsibility falls onto the mentors to make sure that they guide their interns through the projects. But what happens to the mentor? who is there to take care of the mentors, which is, and they, they also run into a lot of issues and they need someone or something to go to and be like, okay, I have this problem, what do I do? And that was our guiding vision with the role handbook. Okay, now Fernando will do the future part. All right, so we talked already about what happened. Let's talk a little bit about what's next. Um, well, also what is currently happening. So the first steps is Flock. Uh, we will have some presentations, including this one. Uh, then after Flock, things uh, will set up, set up a little bit, and then we will finish the role handbook for Fedora, um, the Fedora Mentor Project uh, representatives and also for the uh, coordinators. And then in, system, in September, uh, we want to provide some swag and cool stuff for uh, mentors and mentees to create uh, 
our recognition uh, culture and recognize the effort because uh, being a mentee is hard and being a mentor is also really hard. And finally, in October, um, we want to sit down with a uh, mindshare committee and yeah, establish a team that will continue moving forward the federal mentor project uh, work and effort. So uh, why with the mindshare committee and what do we need to do with them? So in essence, we need to collaborate with them to make sure we have a team of people uh, that are going to ensure that the efforts uh, on mentorship opportunities continue and grow, and this is not a one-time thing, and this is a continual effort. Then we need to keep the documentation up to date. This is something really hard because things and processes changes all the time, and from one year to the other, if we don't keep a look on the documentation, it might be updated, and then the situation is to start to be worse and worse because people don't know how to apply or how to handle situations correctly. So we need to keep an eye on documentation. Then we have, uh, yeah, we need to continue facilitating conversations between mentors and mentees and applicants. Uh, like communication is hard and it's always good to have someone that takes care of some of the cultural aspects, uh, communication difference, and how to handle some difficult situations that are always, yeah, part of the mentorship uh, mentorship opportunity. And then we want to make sure there is a recognition culture for mentors and mentees, that they feel recognized for what they do, and uh, we believe that that will help them to continue and uh, stick to the community and continue contributing over time. Uh, so the idea is that um, it will be awesome if we get the biggest amount possible of mentees to uh, stick to the federal community. So in the future, they are also mentors because when a mentee in the future becomes a mentor, usually it's a really good mentor because they know how a mentee feels. And yeah, there is some empathy there. So it will be really nice if we can get them into the project. And this team also should take a look to the future of Federal Men uh, Mentor Summit. So if that you don't know, uh, the Federal Mentor Summit is an event that is happening during Flock, yeah, right now. And the idea is to uh, promote and grow the culture of mentorship uh, in Federal community. So, yeah, this is Flock, it's part of the Mentor Summit. <laughs> okay, um, join us for the events that we have today, oh, sorry, tomorrow. Uh, so, we will have a showcase and we'll, we will show the um, uh, about the work of our last season's interns. Um, it will be really good, so please, uh, tomorrow at 10 in the main room. And then also join us for the Mentorship summit, summit panel discussion. Bring all your questions, uh, all the topics that you would like to discuss, questions, uh, suggestions, how we could improve things. We want to hear from you. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's going to happen also tomorrow at four in the main room. All right, so if you want to help, we need help. Uh, of course, you can be a mentor, you can propose new uh, mentorship opportunity. You are aware of some in which Federal is not participating, but right now we are also especially looking for translators because we created the uh, role handbook, we uh, wrote them in English, but uh, men some mentorship opportunities like Orichi doesn't require you to uh, speak English. So um, we think that it will be nice to have them in several uh, languages so uh, we can reach out more people and yeah, provide opportunity to people that also don't know English. Yeah, so reach is out on Matrix. And we are also at GitLab. So we have now our GitLab home where we have all the issues, tracker, uh, documentation, and so on. So if you have any uh, proposal or uh, you want to provide translations, please also reach us out uh, there. <laughs> That's all. So um, I think we have some time for questions. Okay, is there any questions?
Great, great, great effort. Thanks for doing this. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. So, thank you so much for uh, these efforts. These are very, very important uh, and sometimes sidetracked, uh, but you have given the enough importance and effort to put in all of these things together. I was uh, asking Justin as well do you have any plans to roll out the hard co copies of uh, the whole book? Some fancy design. Currently, we, we even thought about that, but might be. Oh, sorry. Hmm. All right, sorry. So I think currently we didn't think about that, but might be uh, an option to explore in the future. I, I think it's a good idea. It, it might be a good idea for the more general aspect of it, because I think the process details probably might get uh, out, out of date and then. Yeah. That's yeah, not very useful, but for the general recommendations about communication, culture, all of that probably mm -hmm. can yeah, be. There good. are things which we need to consider to roll that out. But I was just thinking that you also raised a point about mentors being recognized. So, uh, what about creating a kit for those mentors, and we can include this book in that, and some more goodies or swag for mentors and mentors. So that's sort of a thing. That's probably a good mm -hmm. thing for Smira because she, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's a, uh, yeah, she exactly. was looking into that. So. Yes, yes. Yeah. But that's uh, actually a really good idea. Mm -hmm. And we could also, a more general version of the handbook could be distributed at events like themes for people who may not know much about mentoring or just like introduce mentoring to people just to plant the idea of mentoring in their mm -hmm. heads and maybe they can explore more. So I think that's a really good idea that, that we can look into. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, one more question I have is about utilization of this tool too. So are you going to keep a tab about the uh, utilization of this book and getting the feedback for the improvement? Uh, how, how are you going to do that? How do you plan to do that? Yeah, so that's a really good question. One of the things that we talked about was actually quantitative metrics while we were doing, while we were doing this uh, proposal, like how we can measure it. And one thing, obviously, it's a, it's, I wouldn't call it trivial, but it's a small but powerful metric that we can track its page views, right? And also, uh, uh, sorry, what was the second part of your question? How, how you receive the feedback? Yeah, so we actually, I, we fast tracked our accepted interns role handbook so that we could have our accepted interns of this cohort actually use it, and then we could get feedback from them. And also, we plan to set up feedback mechanisms right there in the in the role Maybe handbook. Maybe survey link. Or yeah, or something like, oh, if you if something seems outdated or if there's something incorrect, you want something added, you can reach out or to us here, or you can uh, on GitLab. You can open an issue on GitLab. So yeah, we th that we did talk about these feedback mechanisms and metrics to track how well the role handbooks are doing, uh, how useful they are. Seems you have everything covered <laughs> already. So thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So I did want to mention that there's a mentorship skill building workshop on Saturday. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, because uh, we talked about the different mentor summit bits, but that uh, Samira and I are going to run that, and I think it's three or so hours. So there'll be plenty of breaks, but everyone should join if you're interested in. Building <laughs> interested in building your skills of mentorship. Um, we've set up some really interesting scenarios for folks, easy ones and tough ones. So definitely come for that. No, I have two questions. Why do you think we are not getting selected for GSOC and GSOC? Right, I, I think I can handle that. Okay. <laughs> So I, I went through the process of applying to both of them. And right, so Google is kind of cutting down a lot of the funding for this kind of project. So that makes it harder to get selected. That's one of the main things, in my opinion. The second thing is that they first try to create like a weird 
internship period like three weeks, inter and, and that doesn't work out for people because in three weeks you cannot, yeah, you cannot do nothing uh, <laughs> uh, that's significant. But so they went back to the uh, default format of uh, the whole summer, but without less funding and therefore less organization are being selected. And I think they are also trying to pick um, independent or non-funded or non-company backed organizations. Um, like in, in Google's season of dogs, it was very clear that they, the organizations that they picked didn't have a company funding them at all, which I can understand because it's, it's kind of fair if they budget is low, um, they need to prioritize and yeah, if there are other, um, other um, organizations that does not, doesn't have the money to promote this kind of mentorship themselves, they should probably be prioritized. But I think that's the main reason. Also I have the feeling that in Google Summer of Code, it's like an inertia thing. Like when you get selected, it's easier that the next year you get selected. But the moment you stop applying, it's hard to get back to, to it. But that's, I guess, I'm not completely sure about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have a few more questions. Oh. Yeah, I was gonna add, uh, there's also one more thing, uh, which, which sort of happened right before this initiative. When we were trying to participate in Google Summer of Code, what happens is they require, they have a like a longer application period for orgs where you're supposed to like have a better history of like proposing projects. You have to have more projects which are well outlined well f and very far in advance as compared to outreachy, which has a much more easier, I would say like it's much more easy for an organization to apply for outreachy. And what happened was at that point, right before the deadlines or like when they opened the applications, they would expect organizations to have like multiple projects, like five projects well thought out, planned in advance. But now there's not enough time to do that. And that's also, that, that sort of like at that point I question, okay, who's supposed to do that? Who's, who's supposed to uh, make sure that we have like five projects, five months in advance and make sure that we are keeping track of that. And because it's, it's harder for mentors and the organization to apply there as well. And also it's only coding projects or like tech projects, which also limits the scope of the number of projects that you can propose. Thank you for th uh, Did you try to give this feedback to GSOC? Yeah, um, so uh, I met with the GSOC uh, coordinator, I forget her name, uh, at FOSTEM, Stephanie, yes, Stephanie, and I talked to her about this and she mentioned that yes, a lot of orgs do have a problem with like uh, this, but also at that point it Thank was like they, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> no, at that point they did mention that they, they do have, like they've seen these problems with other orgs, but then at that point it's more of an org problem rather than, like because other orgs are doing this, right? They, they have other organizations that are doing this. I have more questions, but I don't know if we're out of time. <laughs> so I'll talk to you later. <laughs> yeah, for the audio. I do have a question. Um, I I understand that our reach is for means uh, means uh, uh, that are that are for the people that is not represented that are minority, right? Um, one of them I think is the people that doesn't speak English. Uh, that that, that in for 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 example, um, Latin America. Uh, what would be the strategy of uh, of the group to 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 join in, uh, people from, from, uh, from, for example, Latin. I think we can answer that quickly. Um, translators, uh, this is why we are looking for translators. We want to translate the uh, role handbooks to different languages. So people from Latin America, for example, that speak Spanish or Portuguese and they don't know English, they could read it in Spanish or Portuguese and do the process and apply. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But but I am talking about I am talking about the for example the mentor. You know that that the mentor well, always yeah. or the vast majority of, of, of time uh, they speak English, okay? And the communi 
communication is, uh, is, 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 is not so good. Uh, uh, <laughs> so uh, oh, go ahead, please. I was just going to say that's why it's important for us to have diverse mentors as well. Like, if I, I, cannot prob I cannot have an intern who speaks Spanish because I don't speak Spanish, but I can have an intern who speaks Hindi because I speak Hindi and I can conduct the project in Hindi. So it's important for us to have a diverse range of like mentors mm -hmm. so that we can get more diverse people and have more diverse projects. You have here a contributor in Spanish, okay. <laughs> One of the things that is also going to be we're looking at in the mentor project process is guidelines on how to propose a project and how to pitch that when we're looking every year for what projects we're going to run. Like that's one of the things that we want to make more clear and transparent about how you can run a project with Fedora and how you can be a mentor. Yeah. there will be some priority areas where you would like more projects to focus. So will there be, will there be any, any visible or transparent list on which you would show someone to submit a project? Uh, I don't think I caught your question. Mm -hmm. Do you mean like prioritizing what projects get selected? Okay, so we had that problem this year as well where we had more proposals than we had funding. Uh, and so how we worked that out was I, First, we talked mutually between mentors, like, oh, we have these four or five projects, but we only have funding for three. And a lot of times, uh, what we saw were mentors were actually like, you know what, that project is more important, or like, I, I don't mind, I can do my next round. Also, as we apply to more internship projects, we could, for example, move coding projects to GTalk, right, and have non-coding projects in our PC because that's, that's the setup for it, yeah. and. Of, I guess at the very end, if nothing else, then we have to prioritize people who propose the project first or like just the quality of project. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Like the strategy, the 24 year strategy. Yeah. That also makes sense. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hey guys, I just had a question. I'm a new Fedora, Fedora contributor. I've been contributing to another company for about 12 projects, which takes about three years to, to do that. And um, I was interested in like, are the projects, are topics already assigned when you apply to a topic? Because I want, if I was gonna do any kind of mentorship, I would need to do a project with you guys first, a few projects to get acquainted with the operating system a little bit better. Um, so how do you guys apply for projects? Like what is the procedure? And is that gonna be covered in another meeting or? Yeah, yeah, you can go ahead. Right, so uh, the idea is that we, this is why the role handbooks are there. So now we have the mentor's role handbook and we can just create the coordinator one, which is probably more related to this. So in essence, uh, you are going to be able to, we will provide a process to create an issue on our GitLab and say, hey, I have an idea. And then you need to pitch for that idea. Um, it doesn't matter if it's coding or design or documentation or whatever, or QE, whatever. And then you pitch for that idea, you get uh, uh, some questions from us and if it passes all the criteria, then you're good to go, we can move it forward and yeah, try to get you an intern and yeah. Thank you. 